Okay. And we are live. Hello, everyone, and nice. welcome to the special town hall discussion. Uh, my name is Peter, and I'd like to welcome the founder of New Masters Academy, Joshua Jacobo, and the director of education, Thaddeus Hello. Taylor, for a discussion about the recent enhancements to our Drawing Foundations module. Uh, we're going to hear about the philosophy behind Drawing Foundations, uh, the recent enhancements that have been made, and what this means as part of the wider curriculum at New Masters Academy. Uh, so we, before we begin, everyone who's just joining us live, you have the opportunity to ask questions in the chat window, and Joshua and Thaddeus will do their best to get to these throughout the discussion. So firstly, I'd like to ask if you can give a brief overview of what Drawing Foundations is and how it has impacted the students' learning journey uh, so far. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Go ahead. You take ahead. it away, Joshua. This is your baby. <laughs> so uh, New Masters Academy, we we started developing in 2010, uh, along with Villapu Academy. And at that time, when we were creating New Masters Academy, there was uh, there were there was Nomon Workshop, for example, DVDs uh, from professional entertainment artists that people would have. There was this kind of stuff out there. Um, there were DVDs, obviously, of a long tradition of like demos and how to how to draw, how to paint. There were there was the famous artist course, which uh, Rockwell and a bunch of other artists had tried to get started, where it was basically a correspondence course based on books. Uh, even the 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 Barg the Barg stuff was actually a correspondence course at first, but there was nothing that existed that was a foundational drawing training that exist that existed. And a lot of the professional artists who are teaching and a lot of the art at the university level. So if you went to art school or you went to university and you majored in art, you were going to be already sort of expected to know how to draw, which is bizarre because that's what you would think you would learn at art school is how to draw. And so you might have one foundational drawing class one in four years or five years, however long you're doing. You might have one foundational drawing class, maybe a figure drawing class. And if you're extremely lucky in anatomy class, but often like the figure class is packed. You, get, you can't even get into that. So that's sort of the, the trend and the kind of the landscape that we were seeing when we were starting to make New Masters Academy. And what the problem was, like on the entertainment level, like people who were at the hiring committees at the studios uh, who were, you know, basically working with these students who were leaving the art school, you know, at these schools and trying to get in, they were all basically saying the same thing, which was that the students didn't have foundational skills. They could imitate certain styles, but they couldn't actually draw like they weren't flexible they didn't really understand perspective and volume and gesture and uh, and uh, and design and uh, i think you might have lost me for a minute so that was sort of the the immediate problem that we tried to solve with new masters academy which is creating a foundational course and the word foundations fundamentals foundational fundamental if you look at the actual like internet history and the search terms and stuff, that was us promoting that stuff. And it sort of caught on in other schools and other online sites just started imitating us. They used our language, our framing, our arguments. There'd be arguments that I would write and I would speak publicly. And then I would hear competitors literally saying my words and my reasoning and all of that. And so it would be normal for you know uh, teachers to tell you that you should or professionals to give you the advice is you really need to work on your fundamentals. But it was almost like a little, it was like a little thing people would say. They're like, well, how do I do that? They're like, I don't know, just draw, copy the masters, do this, do that. But there was no program like that. So I think it's really important, especially since things move so fast and to really like plant a flag here is that not only was New Masters Academy the first subscription-based uh, art learning site, but we were also the first to do a fun, uh, an online fundamentals program. And the Drawing Foundations program, which is what, what we call that today and, and thaddeus here has been a huge part of that which is a much more organized much closer to if your university did teach a one or two year drawing foundations and it was one of the best universities that's th this is kind of how it might look like that's sort of how we've been approaching it so we're using the things that yeah educational uh institutions do really well in terms of organization and accountability and all of this stuff we're also doing this, as you know, as we said during the tenure, that we are actually moving towards real accreditation at New Masters Academy. So credits, degrees, that's what we're moving towards. But at the time, it was just sort of filling a need that that didn't exist. And then the whole industry sort of piled on. And then all of a sudden, 
you know, everyone's changing directions and now they've got a foundations course. And what do you know? They looked at the new master's videos and then they and then they made their content based on our content. So the foundations didn't exist. You did have a, like, for example, Sheldon taught kids. There were a few boutique schools or, you know, for example, um, not not in the more constructive methods, but in the academic methods, there were there was training in other countries for kids and stuff. But in terms of the way we teach foundations, where it's optical and accuracy and imagination and construction and pers that what we call the foundations, nobody, nobody even came close to it. And still today, even though a lot of the online learning industry is low key ripping off New Masters Academy, sometimes extremely obviously, like we have this class, then this they have this class, then we do this, then they do this. It's, it's hilarious. But even it, with all that imitation going on, which is normal when you're in the leadership position, still nobody has anything close to what we've been able to uh, build here. It's way, way more comprehensive. It's by far the best foundations uh, uh, module, which is part of our, our tracks. And I'll let Thad talk about the structure of that a little bit. But still to this day, nobody can, nobody can catch up. So we've had a really positive influence on the entire industry and even at the art school. So even the art schools, the expensive art schools, like $100,000, $200,000, they are looking at New Masters Academy. And we've had a few of these schools who got group accounts with us for a year, and then they launched be new beginning classes that they didn't have before after they had the group account here. And so the actual real physical brick and mortar institutions, there's also uh, schools where they've literally told us that they're basing their school off of New Masters Academy in several places around the world, including some places where there like, aren't really art schools. And so we take this, very seriously, this position of leadership when it comes to what are the foundations? What are the fundamentals? Like, what are they? What are we even talking about here? And what is the best way to teach them so that students are not going through this imposter syndrome where they're doing illustrations, but they don't really understand what they're doing when they're tracing photos or they have to go to photo references and they'd like to be able to design and they don't have that confidence. They don't feel like that creative, confident version of themselves that they expected that they were going to be simply because of a lack of, of technical skill of craft. So that's sort of like an unfortunate situation that still exists today that we are trying to solve with the drawing foundation. So that's sort of like the the idea and the mission behind it. And, and then how it links up with the tracks, which are like your full four years, basically like a master apprenticeship almost. But maybe I can I can kick it over to, the name says Caleb, but this is actually Thad on Caleb's account, just to be clear in case nobody noticed that. Yeah. So maybe Thad, you could talk a little bit about the structure of drawing foundations and how it is yeah. today. Yeah, the structure of drawing foundations now, especially with this, the new adjustments to it, um, it is meant to take you from the absolute fundamentals of drawing shapes, uh, learning perspective, learning how to draw in three dimensional space, learning how to set up still lives and, and complete complete those, and then progressing you into figure drawing, gesture drawing, um, and from there taking that knowledge and moving into perspective and composition um, within part four port five of the module. So you you get a chance to sort of uh, progress your learning and progress uh, um, the amount of, of concepts that you are learning. And it's not just like everything's thrown at you at once. It, there's there's progression in here. Um, you'll, you'll learn how to sketch, you'll learn gesture, and those influences everything from how you build compositions to how you uh, render the figure to how you arrange the figure. And from there towards the end, uh, you get a bunch of choice points where you get to choose how you want to pursue your education learning path. So that's basically how the drawing yeah. foundations module is set up now. Sty stylistically too. Could you talk about that Thad? Cause a lot of times people are, they're like, okay, I want to do this kind of art. Let's say it's a comics or let's whatever it is. I want to do this specific mm -hmm. thing. Everybody who's the best in this world, let's say comic artists, I was watching a stream by my favorite comic artist, or I watched a video from the sixties or whatever. And they said, it all comes down to solid drawing, or they said something about foundations. So now that's why I'm Googling mm -hmm. structured art education and foundations. And I found new masters Academy, but there's so much variety here. And it seems like there's fine art and all this stuff here. Is this actually a good match for me if I want to do something more specific, like a specific type of entertainment style? Does that still apply to them, to those students? Oh, yeah, this applies perfectly because um, a lot of people get further in, say, the career path of, of uh, entertainment or not knowing the fundamentals and then hit roadblocks. And I think learning the fundamentals and being able to jump over those roadblocks, uh, this is the perfect uh, system for that.
from here you can you can learn the yeah, fundamentals. I have a little story. I don't know. If I love stories. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> well, one thing that when we were first talking about when we first pitching this idea of fundamentals to all these famous teachers and collaborators and stuff, we had to like explain the problem a little bit. And one story that I that I would tell, I hope I'm not going to get into uh, trouble for saying this, is that um, when Disney decides to get into 3D and they decided to make Tangled, right, which Bill Perkins had done the storyboards for like way earlier, I believe. But when they did that, they had to now hire a bunch of Maya artists, right? This is before Disney owned Pixar. It's after, you know, uh, Lasseter had left and after doing Brave Little Toaster and had done this whole thing. And so they actually were having to, so they had all these animators, they had the best, some of the best animators in the world. A lot of the best animators in the world were there. And they, but they, in order to do the software, so it was in Maya, it was animated in Autodesk Maya. It was, uh, in order to do that properly, they brought in Maya animators. There were people out there who could, who could do this. And they ran into this crisis where these people couldn't animate. Like they knew the software better than anybody in the world. They were like the top experts on the software, but they couldn't animate because they didn't learn how to draw and they didn't learn how to animate it traditionally. So this is not, this is Disney that's freaking out with all the resources in the world. And so what they actually ended up doing is they ended up bringing back traditional animators. This is where I come into the story because one of my close friends, Danny Galliotti, they went to Danny, who was a 2D animator. He had done Hercules and Lion King and all this stuff. He's a lead animator. He's unbelievable draftsman, traditional, unbelievable traditional draftsman. So they went to Danny and they they asked him to come back and they were going to teach him Maya. Well, he didn't use digital like at all whatsoever. And I, I know that because I was working with Danny at New Masters Academy and we were like trying to get the recording and everything down. And so Danny picked up Maya, I think in about three weeks with no experience, none at all. Picked up in three weeks, oh, wow. and that's just one example of the of these stories. I have other stories too, where I've helped traditional sculptors learn ZBrush or whatever. It turns out, like this is this is what the people at the studios know. This is what the executives know, and the heads of schools knows. And pe people are not telling you this. As it turns out, it is the foundations are what make you a strong artist in any field. And those and the the software, the actual tools of the trade. Can you guys hear me? You just like disappeared for yeah, a second. Yeah, no, we can hear. You. We can hear you. You're so good. Okay. So, so the, the software and the techniques and the stuff you're going to learn in a video where a professional artist shares their techniques, that's what the students think they need. And that's what they were learning, but that's not the fun, the foundations. And that doesn't actually allow you to be successful. And we're not just talking about entertainment. I'm talking about any, any visual arts field. And so from the entertainment industry, that was one of the ways that the problem of a lack of foundations became extremely personal to me because I'm talking to these people in these fields, these leaders in these fields, and they're all saying these kids can't draw. Like that's the most common theme. If you talk to any of them, it's like they can't draw. They can do this little style and all their portfolios look the same, but they don't have the flexibility. They can't move from project to project. They can't thumbnail and develop a composition. They only know how to do this one thing in this one software. And that thing is already five years old because that video that they learned is old and that's no longer how we're even doing it now. We're not even using that software anymore. So they're, so they're, they're, they're guaranteed, it, Glenn calls it guaranteed obsolescence. When you focus on techniques and when you focus on uh, um, things of the moment instead of the foundations, you're guaranteeing obsolescence. And by the time you're trying to enter the industry, it's already different. And because you don't have that flexibility because you didn't study the foundations, you're, I mean, I could go all day long about the foundations, but it's something that, that we were hearing from students. We were, I was experiencing in my own education, trying to educate myself. Everybody seems to, uh, every, everyone, every professional, every, every person I talked to seemed to have the same. There was a serious problem that New Masters Academy was designed to solve. That's actually why New Masters Academy didn't get into illustration courses, application courses, comic book courses, animation courses, all this fantastic, exciting stuff, vehicle design, all this amazing stuff that we're doing now, we could have been doing that 11 years ago. Like that would have been the easy way to make money. It's like, look, what classes are popular? Well, just look, look at the ones that are selling. You know, it's it's a it's a composition for uh, 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 illustration. It is uh, world building. It's like the students don't need world building. They can't build a box. They can't build a sphere. Right. So like, yep. it, it's like catering to the delusional attitudes of beginners where it's like, I'm going to do my own Tolkien world and it's an MMO and it's a series of five movies and it's a graphic novel. And they're like, great, here's some tricks in Photoshop. Like it, it was almost like there almost seemed like there was a financial incentive to pander to beginners that nobody expected to actually become competitive. 
It's almost like the it's almost like the beginners were not being taken seriously. They were just their money was being taken. That's the kind of the impression I started to get from the industry. Like no one's trying to, no one's trying to actually teach these people anything. They're just trying to do these this performance and make money on the thing and then translate that into a book. And so the financial situation was an issue too. But with New Masters, I just wanted it to be something that's very pure. And that's why we went to all of the best teachers in the world, the people who are our colleagues, to help us craft this thing that doesn't exist and there's no model for it. To get a model for the drawing foundations, you have to go back centuries in history. And there's it's not even clearly documented. You have to literally start looking at like the apprenticeship systems of the workshop, the master apprentice system. So it's basically something that didn't exist. It was incredibly difficult and expensive and resource intensive to develop. And along the way, you have to actually navigate a lot of like politics because some people are saying you don't need perspective and that perspective is a fad. It's not really what illustrators use, for example, you don't need it. And other people are saying perspective is life, perspective is everything. And so you have all these different artists who don't agree philosophically, and then we have to take the God's eye view of like saying, okay, this is their arguments, and this is their industry, and this is why they're saying it, and then tracing the lineage to how where that even comes from, and then positioning them like pieces on a game board so that the best ideas from the best industries, from the best teachers can sort of filter and form that foundation that you stand on. And so the joint foundations like probably has not been marketed or talked about enough but it, that this is the the biggest difference between when i was first starting out it's on youtube it's not uh it's literally this tool is the tool that i didn't have access to and if i would have had my learning journey i would have i would have been twice as good in half the time i feel like if i could have had this resource so if you're using new masters academy and you're just jumping around from cool video to cool video you're treating it like it's one of these other courseware sites where it's like oh yeah i wouldn't watch this landscape video on new masters and oh yeah then i wouldn't you're not going to get anywhere. You you literally are you're you're deluding yourself. You have to truly learn how to draw and design and understand color and color theory and how to mix color and how to apply them. You need to understand so much. It's literally years of information that you need. Otherwise, it's going to sabotage your goals. And even if you can kind of get get by with the techniques you have, maybe you're using Blender and you're you have a model you pose and you can kind of do a thing and you look at these other art and it kind of looks all right. Well, that's not going to make you competitive. And as soon as the trends move away from that, you're going to be lost because you're essentially like hacking it together. You don't, you're not really designing like a master. You are sort of piecing it together. And a lot of times people talk about aphantasia or, or uh, um, imposter syndrome, and everyone else sort of so everyone else sort of so comes together to soothe them, where they're like, "Yeah, we all feel like that. That's normal." When I hear it, I'm like, "That's not normal, actually." I think that's think you don't have the fundamentals, and you're trying to do things you're not qualified to do yet. And if you just went back. You wouldn't feel all this mystery and confusion. You would feel confident. You would feel creative. But there's no, I mean, this is like a, it's like a martial arts movie. It's like a kung fu movie. You know, there is no way that you can't skip the training montage. And at the same time, when it comes to training montages, anybody's training is not equivalent. So you're like, oh, I have this PDF that somebody made. Who made it? How good are they? I have this PDF and now I'm doing 10,000 linear exercises. Well, what are the linear exercises? Does the person, so anybody can get on the internet and do a challenge or they can type up like some exercises that they make in uh, Illustrator and throw it on. That doesn't mean that those make sense. It's not random abstract lines. There's a certain way to construct lines. There's a certain way to, to chain together C curves to create continuity. There's a certain way to handle overlaps. There's a certain way to define volumes and a certain way to light volumes. And you need to study with the masters. That's why it's called New Masters Academy. You're the new masters and the living masters of today are the ones who are teaching you. That's the entire concept. So not only is it foundational, structured, organized, disciplined, rigorous learning instead of cheap techniques and tricks and software and shortcuts that will sabotage you while they take your money. It's the opposite of that, but it's also because of the master apprentice system, it's taught by the best artists. So the book you have, if you're reading a book on figure design and invention, that's a ripoff of our teachers. That's a ripoff of Glenn Vilpu, Steve Houston, and Carl Ganas. Why don't you actually study with Glenn Vilpu, Steve Houston, and Carl Ganas instead of the person yeah. who just took their diagrams and put it in a book or put it on a uh, Patreon or put it on a competing website? That that's what people are doing. They they'll literally they'll they'll watch a new Masters Academy course, make a shorter, worse version of it, and then sell it on the big competing sites. And they'll admit it. Like there was somebody who was on Instagram who just said, "Yeah, I watched." Robert Bodum's uh, courses and, and Eric's courses on New Masters Academy. And then I developed this course and it's now available for sale on one of the biggest sites that you all know. Like that's how this is working. So the other element of this is having the right training, 
the right teachers. It's not just structure. A student can't create this structure. So if somebody is creating a PDF, because, oh, I'm learning and I'm sharing what I learned, they're unqualified because there's so much nuance. It looks simple. Exercises seem simple, but there's so much theory that goes into why is it that and not something else? And that's literally what that Thad's entire job is uh, is involved in. Maybe you could talk. A I think bit you about just. That. I think you just justified my uh, complete relevance in life <laughs> with that. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, yeah, New Masters Academy. When I hopped on, um, we had a bunch of master courses that that I was brought on to help bring structure to, and that's essentially where we are with the course guide. Uh, the course guide is a sort of living, breathing guide with with all the structure you need to go down a magnitude of different learning paths. Um, the main one, uh, which we are focusing on this talk, is is our drawing foundations uh, module, and that leads into all these different tracks that we have, which lead into all these different modules to help you learn um, all these different skills from all these living masters. So yeah, um, most so, of this so talk I wanted can you go to go back to that diagram for just one second because I just want to clear yeah. something. I know that there's some people get a little confused with this. I just want to put it in in like a, another terms. So you see that long green bar, the long teal bar at the top, right? The long one. Okay, that's a module. So that's I hate that I know I hate this kind of object oriented programming way of talking about everything. We've let like computer science like completely define the way we think. Everything's a freaking node, um, but it's also logically coherent and but yeah for, forget module think of this as like your first year your first year your first two years your undergraduate basically at yes. a university the reason we don't call it terms in years is because it stresses out the student because a lot of new masters academy students have a full-time job and they've got kids and they've got all this stuff and the mm -hmm. reason they're at masters and the reason they're not at art center or whatever is because of their lifestyle and and, and they need to it's online learning for the people who look for online learning are often people who want to learn, want to enrich their lives, want to change their lives, but they also have got other stuff going on, right? Or they live in a place where they don't have access to uh, a lot of this stuff. And so, although I do think New Masters is better than art school when we say that, but but so so but the reason so because of that reason, we don't say academic year, term, these kinds of things, because that all implies a temporal element and it stresses out the students because like, well, I can only draw an hour a week and so you're telling me that this is a year program but if i'm doing the math it would take me four years or it would take me three years or whatever and mm -hmm. so it's really important for us to emphasize that new message academy at least the subscriptions the way they are are asynchronous you can do them at your own speed that is not how art school is art school is the opposite yeah. of that there's deadlines and you know you're doing a cocaine you're doing whatever it takes to uh, get through your 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 deadlines that's like it's like a culture of grind <laughs> It's incredibly, it's it's incredibly uh, stressful, and so that being said, as we as in the future, as we move in the the direction of accreditation, we're gonna have announcements on this soon. There are gonna be uh, synchronous versions that are much more like art school with deadlines and accountability and all this stuff. But it's yes. really important to keep in mind with New Masters Academy is you're paying for a cheap, it's a very cheap, you're not supposed to say cheap, you're supposed to say affordable. It's a cheap ass subscription. It's insane the amount of value you're getting. It's absolutely insane. Thousands of hours of the best content on the internet. That's what it is. In addition to have this vibrant community and the biggest, uh, best reference library of 3D models and, and 2D images specifically for artists, as well as group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, all these amazing services, live classes where you're interacting with the teacher. There's so much going on, but it does organize into these track systems. And so when you look at this thing here, this top bar, this is your drawing foundations module. That's what we're here to talk about. Everybody has to go through that. That's what the flow indicates. You can't jump into sculpture. You can't jump into comics. I just want to jump into comics. Well, you know, if you're going to be out there in the world representing New Masters Academy, we want to make sure that your comics don't look whack. So you have to do the drawing foundations here. And then once you get through the drawing foundations, then you can choose any of those or you could do these simultaneously. So then you can actually, it's almost like majoring. So now I'm majoring in sculpture, I'm majoring in carving, I'm majoring in illustration or comics or animation or portrait or landscape or whatever it is. And we're gonna add more. We're gonna keep adding to these. And once you once you get into those, you see these lists below where it says one, two, three, four. These are the different modules. Each of them is like drawing foundations module. So drawing foundation module is, I don't know what we're currently estimating that. It's like one to two years, probably closer to 
two years, right? Closer to two, yes. So it's a two-year program. And then once you get through that, then you start majoring in your specialty. And one thing people, students freak out about sometimes is that they'll say, well, this, you know, I have to actually move out of the house, like maybe if you're a teenager or something. I got to move out of the house and have a job in a faster timeline than what this is taking. So this might be like the luxury version for people who can just, you know, not work and do this, but I need to get working. This is the most important thing people miss when they say this kind of thing, is that if you finish the drawing foundations module at New Masters, and you have some training in your field, you're probably overqualified competitively compared to the other students. Like our strong students who have been here even just for a few years are stronger artists than the professional level. You think the professional level is up here, what you realize the professional level is somewhere <laughs> right in the middle of the drawing foundations, maybe biased a little bit towards the beginning. So you could actually be doing professional work while you go through your new master's academy education that's what people are actually doing there's a lot of professionals uh who are also taking new master's academy courses and so our recommendation is is um this is this this is the rocket fuel there's nothing that is more potent than this stuff but as you're going through and you're learning these skills take 50 percent of your time and keep working on your personal projects study masters that you love that maybe are not the masters that we are talking about uh when we're giving an example, if we're talking about Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo or Sargent or Soroy or whoever we're sort of uh, using in the class to teach, you could also be studying your favorite artist. You're going to notice that your favorite artist, your 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 perception of their ability is going to lower as you get better, whereas the masters go the other way. And then finally, you're like, okay, now I understand why they talk about the old masters. I thought they were equivalent, but I couldn't see anything. And now as my as my skill goes up, I realize that there's there's a difference, like there's a big difference here. But that being said, in your 50% amount of time, you're cultivating your own interests and your own niche career or whatever your goals are. So you could be making art, selling art while you're, go while you're going through these, these tracks. So don't think of it as, oh, I can't get started on my artistic career for four years. It's more like, this is the best way to get started right now. So I highly encourage you to get, get in there regardless. And also it doesn't matter what, your expectations don't matter. All that matters is the reality of what it takes to form your brain in the way it needs to be to create the kind of quality that you want to create. Your opinion has nothing to do with it. That's delusional to think that, because I'll have students that come in and say, okay, I've got six months, I just started, I want to start my video game at the end of six months, I'm going to do this and this and this. They've ne it never works out. It's just, they, are, they think they can just define what it takes, but mastery, mastery humbles those who, who seek it. So to become a master, you have to humble yourself to what you actually are capable of doing. That's why drawing from imagination, if you normally use photos, is terrifying. Or that's why doing simple line exercises when you're used to sketching, the reason we avoid these uncomfortable things is we don't like to be faced with our own limitations. But you have to embrace those limitations in order to get anywhere. Otherwise, you're going to be another person who's just making mediocre art and ends up giving up in, in a few years or whatever. So if you really want to succeed at this, you need to change your mentality. Mastery is what it is. It's not up to me. And I have to come to mastery. It does not come to me. New Masters Academy Foundations module is the absolute best way in the world. Not just best affordable option, not just best online option, the best way to do that. That exists. And we're in the process of making it better all the time. And that's what this meeting is all about. I got to stop pitching this thing. This is taking up <laughs> Yeah, that was a, a wonderful uh, explanation of the importance of drawing foundations. Uh, I understand there are some changes and some enhancements that have been made to the drawing foundations module. And I was wondering, Thaddeus, if you could talk us through uh, what those are and the importance of these and how they will impact students. Yeah, the the main importance. Let me scroll down here. Um, yeah the drawing foundation module. So the old version was uh, five sections and it, it, it was very uh, progressive. Like uh, you do one thing, you do the second thing, you do the third thing. With the changes, with the student feedback, that's the important part here is we received a lot of student, student feedback from from the last version. And like, we want to continue to change and, and edit and make things as best as we can. Um, so me and Joshua sat down and we had a conversation about how we can restructure this. Um, so the main takes takeaways were making it more personalized, more choice points, um, and, and having a more module approach so that 
you can go into a a section like drawing basics or cash drawing and observation and work at your pace and 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 have choice in what you're creating but still having the same sort of learning outcome like okay i'm gonna go to this part two and i'm gonna come out with learning these these instances the these these facts about drawing um so the main part we we changed it from five main sections with a linear progression to now six distinct sections with choice points and flexibility um we made part one um a little shorter just to give you uh a a more concise fundamental approach for like the absolute beginner what was the <laughs> the we, yes, need, we, uh, need to, we need to give you a win baby it's tough oh yeah yeah <laughs> It can be tough, especially if, if 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 you're at the beginning, or maybe you just haven't touched art in a while. Like we, we want to give you an easy win. Um, so we have the drawing financials one, and we have uh, fundamentals of drawing and perspective in there. Um, and then we have moved uh, the fundamentals of observational drawing into part two, and and focus that around cast drawing and drawing from observation. So this will really give you the structure of 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 the face of uh, learning from the cast. Um, both Ilya and the site size method um, really focuses on on developing the structure and learning where the placement of anatomy is um, yeah, as its fundamental space, course. Can I add something about the cast drawing? Yeah. So um, the way that cast drawing is talked about in art school um, is it, it, it's a it's really important exercise because it allows you to study something complex and organic like the head but without all the skin and subsurface scattering yeah. and complex lighting so it's like a so it's thought of as sort of a simpler stepping stone to like full-on nature like figures but there's actually much more uh, to it and i won't get into all of it and my students know what i'm talking about here but in the renaissance for example um they would do these like the like the world's first how to draw book those fialetti plates they would the students would copy these drawings of eyes and noses and then an egg for the head and then put the features on so they had these like drawings that they would copy as part of their training i'm talking about like six years old when the apprentices would start but the that, that wasn't in every single renaissance workshop what appears to be in every workshop every studio all the training was sculpture or plaster cast specifically of ancient greek sculpture specifically not any sculpture. And it's everything we, we talk about when we talk about the educational impact of plaster cast is totally right. But the most important thing that I didn't fully understand until I've developed a lot of this, this uh, content and a lot of this theory is that that is where we are stealing the patterns of the ancients. What do I mean by patterns? I literally mean a 3D curve in space that comes here and comes around and hooks over and one that comes over how to break down the body so you can't actually draw anatomy it's way too complex we can hardly draw a box but if we if we get it into these curves we organize it into these curves and then surfaces are sort of lofted between those curves sort of like the ribs on a boat or sort of like a tent so we're indirectly stealing the tradition we are inheriting the tradition of the masters and so if you're going through a drawing program or you went to art school and you were not doing any master copies and you were not drawing plaster casts you did not inherit this tradition so you're reinventing the wheel you see a hand and you're like i don't know it kind of looks like this maybe maybe it looks like i don't know i want to quit instead of saying okay i've seen leonardo do this i've seen uh the the ancient masters do this i'm looking for this curve oh what do you know there it is i'm looking for that curve oh what do you know so inheriting that tradition is extremely important i want to i just want to give another argument on behalf of plaster cast because there's a lot of complaints that knows this people really they when they get to the plaster cast there it's really frustrating because they're being confronted with their own lack of knowledge because they can't it's not uh they don't know these patterns yet they can't organize form as well yet and they've been doing simple things like uh fruit and vegetables and objects and now they're doing like a face so it's a real like it's a real step up in quality but i just want to reassure you that that's what the greatest masters that ever lived they all inherited patterns and they learned in this very similar way so there's there's no way that's going anywhere if anything we're going to add to that that's all what i was saying yeah yeah i i agree like it it, it can be overwhelming at first but getting through that it really sets you up for the figure. Um, it, it's a great progression from going from learning how to draw a still life to uh, bridging the gap to how do I draw the figure? How do I draw a portrait? Plaster cast is, and working from obs observation is, is the great stepping stone. Um, so from there, 
naturally we go into part three which is gesture and sketching we introduced we reintroduced uh, a couple courses that we took off before and introduce a constructive figure drawing course in here so we have uh, stress free sketching and introduction of figure we reintroduce these will both help you develop a good sense of gesture and how to sketch uh really uh free you up from very um constructive drawing um which a lot of the part one to part two are. Um, they're yeah. really focused on, you know, how do you develop a, a form in three dimensional space? And this sort of brings you out to, okay, how do I understand the gesture and curvature of, of items, especially stress free sketching? I think that that is one of those courses that really takes you out and blends the constructive with the gesture. Um, so we reintroduce that into part three. Um, and this, will give you a better understanding of the figure and how to, to build that leading you into part four, where we have placed a dynamic gesture drawing and force. We made them choice points and we have a constructive head drawing in there also. And so with it's, these- it's, uh, Can I add one thing for that? Sorry, yeah. uh, the timing, I, I'm hearing you delayed actually. And so I, I'm interrupting, I didn't mean to, sorry. No um, problem. I was just going to say with the figure, if you feel like you're not really planning on doing figures and heads, maybe you want to do landscapes or animals or something else, figure is still traditionally, everybody learns figure. Why? Because it's the most complex subject matter that we can deal with. And you might say, oh, well, it's actually not because there's this other organism. Plants have more chromosomes. No, no. It's the most complex subject matter because it's incredibly complex because of nature, but because we are trained, our brains are trained to notice the most subtle differences between other humans. And so an emperor penguins can identify other emperor penguins amongst colonies of millions, but to us, they all kind of look like that pattern of an emperor penguin. We just generalize them. It's the same thing with racial blindness. People from some cultures have trouble recognizing people when they look different from where they're where, from where they're from. That's why sometimes they have to use hair color or something because they can't they can't tell in the face. And so because we're so sensitized to the figure, it allows us to have it's we're drawing ourselves. It gives us a target that our brains are wired more than any other subject matter to study. And so it allows us to hone our craft. So even if you're not interested in the figure as part of your art, and maybe do a lot of people, they change their mind. They say they don't want to do figures because they're bad at them. And then when they get good at them, what do you know? They want to put figures into their scenes. So a lot of times that yeah. happens. But what I'm saying is that the figure in the head, the reason that's, why are they in the foundations if it's such a specific subject matter? Well, stop thinking like an ontological Wikipedia article. Stop thinking about Animalia and our, in Archaea and all these categories. You're a human being. We are drawing ourselves here. That's why it's so vital. There's this tendency to turn everything into Minecraft and abstract everything, but it's not abstract. We're living beings and this is our creativity. So we're humans, we're gonna study other humans. And because of that incredible sensitivity, it makes it incredibly complex. And so that's where a lot of the growth happens that then you can put into your squirrels or your Pokemon or your trees or your flowers or your landscapes. So that's a very traditional approach. You learn the figure in the head at New Masters Academy. It doesn't matter what your preference is. That's gonna make you a stronger artist. And that's why we do it like that. Yeah, like, uh, I guess the personal story is like, when I was in community college, I avoided the figure like the plague until oh, really? I finally took until I finally took a, a figure drawing class, a life drawing class, and I got hooked. And eventually it led into me just being a figure painter. Because why did you why did you her. avoid it? I'm curious. Oh, my God. That's sorry. I, I just stepped on your thing. Why did you avoid it? I'm curious, though. Like, what was it about it that uh, was intimidating or didn't like it? It it uh it felt too complex. It, it, it a lot of the arguments that you were saying resonated to me. That's why I was like, I, I got to bring up this story because uh, that's how I felt when I was first starting my art journey. My 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 art education was like, oh, this is just too complex. This isn't worth anything to me. And then um, as soon as I hopped in, I was I was hooked. I was like, oh, okay. As soon as I like, grasp a basic understanding of how to construct the figure, how to draw the figure, how to paint the figure, I was addicted. I was like, yeah. everything and just, I, how, how do I put the figure in everything? I, um, I, I love your and, figure work, by the way. That's one, that's, oh, uh, that's part of how you got this job is because your paintings yes. were good. We didn't say it, we didn't say it on anything, but we were like, we're not gonna hire anybody if they can't actually, if they're not good because, you need to make important decisions. So it's not just your qualification. I mean, that Thad Thaddeus is highly qualified on paper, but you also need to be a good artist because the reasons that people have weaknesses as artists are lack of understanding often. And that would translate into the, 
you'd be contaminating the new masters community. And so I just <laughs> want to give a shout yeah. out to that here. Uh, same thing. Everybody who's involved in new masters are the best people we can possibly find. Like that, that is always the case because that's going to improve the product. Because like I said, you don't want just somebody on the internet who makes a, makes a PDF to, to be your teacher. That's nuts. You want it to be people who really know their stuff. So I just wanted to point that out. I don't think I've said that publicly. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the figure. Uh, you're going to learn it, and it's going to be great um, by the time you get through through uh, part part three and part four. Um, leading into that, we part five, we start to focus on composition and landscape and and perspective. Like these are really the the like core ideas of picture making. Like okay, okay, I understand how I can draw something. I I can draw a still life. I could draw the figure well. Okay, but now how do I put that together into a image and how do I sell that image and make it believable and get across my ideas and my theories and you know my emotions into the image and this in part five this is where you you start to learn that or start to expand that knowledge start to put figures in environment start to understand how I put figures in space uh how how do I create a landscape how do I create depth how do I create Create, create all these aspects uh, using no 10 and chiaroscuro. How do I use matrices to understand value and oh, push man. these back I, and forth? You, you keep touching on these hot takes like no 10 and chiaroscuro, major and minor key. There is so much of Bill Perkins's theory in the drawing foundation. Bill Perkins is a oh, yeah. Bill Perkins is a fantastic artist. He helped, he's been involved at New Masters Academy since the very beginning. Uh, he was the art director on Aladdin. Uh, he was he worked on a uh, uh, Little Mermaid. Uh, just a, a look at his look up his IMDb. That's the that's who is helping to design New Masters Academy. Look up Bill Perkins's IMDb, and then compare it to whatever other website you are paying for, <laughs> and you'll realize somebody who spent three months at Disney and then didn't get their contract renewed is making an entire career off of teaching online. But that. People like Bill Perkins and Glenn Vilpu, these are like leading yeah. minds of our time. Mm -hmm. and so Bill Perkins's theories on major minor key composition and color specifically are all over New Masters Academy. So sometimes people go, what is Notan and Kiroskiro? What is this major minor key? Why are we doing thumbnails so early? Why are we talking about composition so early? Well, this is not how to draw on the right side of the brain. This is not an about.com article that somebody scraped and had AI write a thing and then got on YouTube and this is actual there the content here is not it's foundation but it's not common it's fundamental but it's not anywhere else but here it's how you do it it's how what is the expression of those foundations and Bill Perkins is a huge part of that and so if you are looking to organize like Thad saying complex scenes you need some if you want to do complex work you need to find a way to layer different elements of the craft that you know that you understand how to control to get a desired effect that's not something that you normally get taught in a you know uh, environment concept development class they're not touching on that stuff because they're not working at that level because they're not in the art director position they they don't have that resume so there there's a big difference between like the level of the theory and who's teaching it and and the composition stuff it's very much bill Poo and bill perkins are a huge part of that oh yeah um I, I knew about it vaguely, like the teachers of Bill Perkins before I started. And then once I got into it, once I dived into each, each of these courses, I was like a firm believer. I was like, everybody needs to learn this. Like, this is <laughs> so crucial. They, yeah, they, these are like, like concepts that I've thought about, but I just didn't know how to put them in words, how to structuralize them, how to understand these thoughts I was having. And, and yeah, so yeah, these are core for the drawing fundamentals. Um, especially moving on into um, going in past the drive fundamentals, going into other tracks, going into other modules. Um, these these really help you getting into that. Like, because yes, we are we the basis of the the first half of the drive foundation is very traditional, but we expand it. So the, you go into illustration, you go into entertainment art, and these concepts are 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 core for that. Like, you 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 just be like swimming and not floating you know like you'd be sinking at that point well tell me thad thad so right now like uh maybe this trend has already passed because these happen so fast but there was a trend for a few years i think uh kim jung gi scott robertson their influence factored into this but it was mainly a dynamic sketching from art center so it's mainly like a west coast 
illustration mm -hmm. kind of a trend, which was that everything's a box. We should start our scenes by building a perspective scene, but not real perspective, more like what I call sketch perspective. So there's no station mm -hmm. points, but we're kind of like exaggerating these boxes that we practice drawing and then we're sticking subject matter into it. And then that's like the foundation for our entire skill set, whether we're going into illustration or fine art or whatever. Is there a reason that dynamic, uh, dynamic sketching, at new, which is visual development one at New Masters Academy, where is that actually at here? It's below here, right? That is right. That is it within this part six right here. Okay. So there are several schools out there who their entire philosophy is just this one class, essentially. Um, and also we have a partner who uh, has a fantastic uh, uh, program that's free right now. It's called Drawbox. You should go and check out Drawbox. Mm -hmm. It's also based on dynamic sketching. But why is it that this sort of trend in the industry is, why isn't New Masters Academy Drawing Foundation module dynamic sketching and then color and rendering why aren't we doing it that way in your opinion i've got my own ideas but i'm just curious what do you think about and, that because and, that's a really common trend and, yeah in my opinion it's it feels like uh people that have hopped in to dynamic sketching without any sort of baseline fundamentals have have most of the time not been successful like they they don't have this spatial awareness of 3d and then you're throwing them into a concept that is that is so about uh an exaggerated perspective but this three-dimensional space that this illusion of space um and without having that fundamental uh core concepts of okay how do i draw a box how do i draw a sphere how do i draw um anything in space they this sort when you throw in all these little different concepts because dynamic sketching covers a myriad of different topics you know oh, yeah, you go there's, from there's, animals there's, you go from vehicles booleans. yeah there's booleans in those class it's like this mm -hmm. object intersects do you know how students do the booleans and dynamic sketching do you know peter how do you do these booleans and dynamic sketching peter might know he you get in blender and then you figure out how to do the boolean tool and then you copy that and turn that in for your assignment that's what most people do at dynamic sketching so this whole idea that they are seeing these volumes come together and learning how to intersect them they're cheating the students are cheating they're all cheating <laughs> like there are a few people who really do so the class is so hard as you said and it's so advanced that people fail when they get to it that that's a really common problem the other common problem with putting dynamic sketching type drawing at the beginning is that it is a bad representation of foundations. It's it's just one set of skills because in reality, drawing is mostly about curves and lines. It's a linear process. Drawing is mostly about lines, but dynamic sketching is all about just throwing your lines out there confidently to get to the point. Well, there's a calligraphy. Drawing is like calligraphy. And so first you need to understand this language of lines and design, because that's where the design happens. The design does not happen in 3D. The design happens in 2D. It happens in orthographic views. It happens when you're designing your character sheets, when you're doing your turnarounds. That's when the design, that's character design, right? That's the design, the vehicle design, prop design. So it's not design focused. It's a perspective scene that you're creating. And so it's it's incredible class. And Charles Hughes version of that class is the best version ever. I think Charles Hughes is a better teacher of dynamic sketching than the creator of dynamic sketching, Nor uh, Norm Sherman, who's amazing, and, uh, and everyone who taught it besides Charles. Because Charles brings a sensibility of gesture, uh, of painting, and of an overall balance and grace that only a master painter can bring to it. If you have somebody teaching dynamic sketching and that's all they do, the problem is they don't understand where those limitations of that skill set are, and they're going to give you bad advice. They're going to say, it's all about this. It's not all about this. They're going to say, this is how you solve that problem. You probably shouldn't solve the problem that way. But somebody like Charles Hugh, who is a master artist, who then learned how to do dynamic sketching to teach it, I think that's a better option for people because it's neat. all of the foundations are important, but they need to be contextualized. You can't say it's all it's all calligraphic line, that's all I'll see, or it's all perspective and that's all. It is, it's the right balance of these foundations. And so if you're thinking of doing the New Master's Academy drawing foundations and you like that kind of drawing, but you're like, dude, they don't get into dynamic sketching and perspective until all of these courses, that's for your own good. And somebody who is selling you that stuff a la carte is doing you a disservice. You need to learn how to draw and observe and organize. Drawing is 2D, it's on a flat 2D plane. We can only make marks with a tool in our arm and that moves in space. Look at this, this is a path in space here. No matter what I do, I can, I can, I can do it with my head, I can smear my head on the canvas, but I'm moving in space. What are those? Those are curves. 
Those are curved lines, even if I use a fat brush or a mop. So I'm forced to deal with curves. And so drawing needs to start with curve and line and value and controlling tone. Those are more basic than a box. It doesn't start with a box. That's insane to think it starts with a box. So it's really important that if you're looking at that and you're thinking, oh, I just want to skip to that stuff, don't do it. Don't do it because you're going to have one of those portfolios and you're not going to be able to get into a studio because everybody's doing the same thing you are. Everybody is pirating the same uh, Peter Han and Kim Jong Gi course and has it in a folder and think they have the secret weapon. Everybody's downloading Loomis and all the like. They all have the same tools. You need to have something above and beyond if you want to excel. You can't look at the same videos that everybody else is looking at, which are bite-sized little per highly performative pieces, and expect to have mastery. All of these things fit into their proper place. That structure. That's what the drawing foundations are all about. And so there are some things in here that we get a lot of complaints about. People are like, God, I want to get to the more advanced stuff. You're not there yet. You're not, it's impossible for you to be there. It's not a matter of talent. It just takes what it takes to get to that level. So this is all designed to tease out your skills and build one upon the other with some repetition and hearing the same concept in a new way to build a really strong foundation so that you can build your pyramid or your palace or whatever, instead of a leaning shack that's gonna blow over the next time the winds hit the islands. You know what I mean? That's all. That, that makes, that, that that's basically the reasoning for why things are in their place right now. Like, uh, the, we want you to have that progression. We want to set you up for success. That that's the, that's the main key. Um, so getting into, so after your about that, uh, if you would like to take them. Yeah. Uh, we could start, let me give a brief overview of part six and we can start taking questions. Um, yeah, so part six, uh, this is where we allow you to choose your path to mastery. We, you have uh, Finding Your Voice with uh, Bill Perkins and uh, Steve, and then you get a wonderful cho choice point of two courses from here. Uh, you get a two, two courses, and this really allows you to match and match um, your, your learning style. So say you're really into entertainment art and you want to take dynamic sketching, uh, but you're really interested in inking. Um, you can take inking with miles at the same time. Maybe you're really into um, drapery uh, and you want to incorporate that into dynamic sketching. Like you, you have those kind of choices. Maybe you're like purely observational focus and really focus on construction. You could take cast drawing and drapery and learn specifically only from Ilya and, and learn how to construct uh, in, in the Russian approach for these type of topics. Um, yeah, yeah, this, this I, part I, is this way is, more, this part is way more uh, personalized than it was before because yes. some of these things we were enforcing, everyone had to do dynamic sketching. And the problem like dynamic sketching in, the, in Miles Yoshida, Miles Yoshida is probably the best one of the best artists at uh, hatching and line work and this kind of drawing alive. Like he's amazing. If you don't know Miles Yoshi to look him up, just like Charles Hughes, um, he's like, these, these are rock stars, but Miles's course and di and dynamic sketching together and the Russian course together. These are very difficult courses. And people were saying that um, they don't see themselves doing this kind of thing, but they want to do more of that kind of a thing. And so there's always this balance between what, are, what should they have? I don't care what they say. What should they have in this mindset? But then there is also the acknowledgement of like where people are really, they, they tell us, like you said, like they're telling us. And so this way you can sort of combine it. So let's say you want to be able to do hatching, you know, but much better hatching than is done in comics, like traditional hatching, like advanced hatching. You can get that for miles. But let's say you also want to do imagination, spatial kind of stuff using perspective. We'll put dynamic sketching with that. Or let's say you want to do portraiture and you want to do realistic portraiture for high profile clients. And that's going to be your career. I'm a portrait. I'm a portrait painter. Well, then side size, uh, side size portrait project. And one of these other ones you could combine is going to give your portraiture an edge. If you could draw lines like Miles Yoshida, your portraits would not look like other portraits, regardless of whether what the medium actually is. And so you can actually sort of start crafting a custom style for yourself as well as just pointing yourself in like what am i going to do after drawing foundations where am i going after this module because some people don't know <laughs> like they're trying to decide oh i wanted to do this but now i'm excited in that like like thad said he didn't want to draw figures he became a figure painter so it doesn't matter if you're young like you're your teenager you're in your early 20s or if you're you know in your 80s and you're it, it's normal for you to realize that there's something that draws your attention more than other things and so we're trying to bake that in now to the end of drawing foundations before you have to make real decisions on like where you're going uh, on the next level yep 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 that's exactly it um all right uh let's we could take some questions peter 
Sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I think this is a question that a lot of students will be asking uh, because from what I gather here from everything you've said, there's a reason why the Drawing Foundations module exists and there's a reason why everyone does it first. Uh, Josiah is asking, I have been working through the previous Drawing Foundations for about a year now and I'm almost done with the old foundations. Would you recommend taking the additional classes before moving on? It, so, um, so that, I, that, yeah, Thad, uh, so there is, we, we talked before about what happens because there's all these scenarios, right? Because we're changing a big thing and people are in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. What happens if somebody passed a section uh, in a, in a, or a part, which is like a term, you know, we don't say term because of the, but so if somebody has already passed this term and they checked it off, I'm done with, I'm done with part two but then a new requirement appeared. I think the idea is that we're not gonna make them go back and take that, or is that, do they have to? Only, and then if they don't have to, should they? That's the, that's, I think that's more the question. Yes, the only course specifically that that applies for is, uh, uh, is uh, stress-free sketching, because we added that- Scroll there, to, uh, Peter. No, that's me, I got you. Oh. Um, that's in, we added that to part three. So okay. say you got into part three of the old version, um and you've already passed through that um the only requirement we have is that you go back and do stress-free sketching unless Take you've done it, it in, in the live class Take it, it. i i think it's a win i think it, you, you yeah. learn so much from that course um also glenn vilpu glenn vilpu is gonna roll you you know what i mean and this will really help you because you you have to do force or uh, dynamic gesture drawing with glenn vilpu and so either mm -hmm. way those are difficult, challenging courses, because we're not just going to sit here and copy the outlines anymore or do a Loomis head. We can't do that anymore. Now we're dealing with the dynamics and the beauty and the composition and the story and the performance and the pathos of the human body. We're bringing people to life now. That's very challenging. Stress-free sketching is a irreverent, funny, quirky, weird course, but it's also um, in the industry, Nobody prepares students, and, and, and that course was actually designed for like the teenager, teenage level. Nobody prepares people for more advanced gesture better than Sheldon does in, in this course. And so I think that whether or not you're required to take it, if you take if you take it, it this part's going to be easier, the drawing with force and dynamic gesture drawing. It's going to be less intimidating. You're going to feel more ready for it. You're going to be able to loosen up. You're not going to worry so much about accuracy long enough to rebuild this sense. Because look, accuracy... Oftentimes we're talking about this kind of a thing, right? We're talking about optical stuff. Like I'm going to build a little straight line thing. That's what we talk about with accuracy. And a lot of students are, are working very optically that way. Well, gesture ain't that. Gesture is like there's this flow that's moving and turning and it's like a river, you know, and the way rivers flow and because of the, the spinning of the earth, it turns and because it turns, it, it erodes one bank and it builds up or it builds a bank on one side and erodes the other. And it has this... Everything in nature is curved. Everything in our visual system is curved. There are no straight lines, uh, optically speaking, because of the distortion of the lens. And so getting really comfortable with this new way of working through the figure, that is very hard for people who have not done it before because all of the skill that they have, which is more copying related often, a lot of that stuff doesn't work anymore. And so it, it's almost like a crisis point. And so this helps you get into the right mindset and, and be gentle with yourself and know you're going to take three steps back. Your drawings are going to look terrible when you first start doing gesture, if you're not used to doing gesture, but that's okay. That's the only way we can build this thing properly. We got to get in there and rip the tooth out and put the implant in. There's no way, there's no way out. It's going to just rot in your whole mouth. It, you have to get in there and we have to do this. And so it's painful. Stress-free sketching is going to make it way less painful. You're going to have more confidence. You're going to have more of the right attitude. You're going to have more of an animator's attitude going into it. And that's why I think that's yeah. really important. Mm, to talk about some more of these special cases. So like, say, if you were doing the old module and you've gotten through dynamic gesture drawing and force, um, those count as prerequisites for intro to the figure and constructive figure drawing. So you do not need to go back and do those ones. The only, the only special case that you would have to go backwards in time and, and complete a course is stress free sketching. We try to set this up as much as we could so that students don't lose their progress. We're trying to give credit to as much of the progress that students ha that have been working tirelessly in the older yep. module as much as possible. So that way you're not looking at 
this new module and feel like you just wasted your time. That that is not the point here. But we're we're giving credit to where the, to courses that we we can and to areas we can. We've uh, so if, whole, if, they have, if they have questions on that, if they're like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know, I'm doing this, but now this change. If they have any mm -hmm. questions, what's the best thing to reach out to us, right? Yeah, reach in, if you're doing interactive, uh, to reach out to the feedback team, they're they're all I've talk to them all uh, extensively about this new program. Um, if they're not doing interactive, they can email info at um, NMA and we can we can get back to them with the response with that. Um, but the feedback team for interactive have, have they've helped me tirelessly make sure that this flow works uh, for this new module. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I actually, I want to take a moment to shout out some of the amazing artists that we've had uh, doing critiques for the interactive version. So when we're talking about this track here, um, it's not, you have to do it in order. Now, you can take several courses within the same part, just like you can take several classes during a term, but you have to go through in order in order to get the interactive, in order to get the credit, so the certificates, but also in order to get the interactive feedback. So the interactive feedback is no extra charge. That's insane. No other institution does this. So you could have the most basic subscription. You could be living in uh, one of the countries where we have lower, uh, where we have lower cost subscriptions because of the, the, the cost of living. So you could go, you could be in, in paying a few dollars a month for new masters because of where you live and the type of plan you have, you know, and you still get this interactive uh, feedback. So that's crazy because normally the interaction and and the the people the, the TAs are unbelievably strong artists. This isn't just like some student that we just said, "Hey, you you teach it." These are like these are like uh, these are stars who are actually doing the critiques. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, for example, Alex Neri is a fantastic artist. You should look him up. It's N E R Y Alex Neri. That's the person who's giving you critiques on your cylinders, and he's that good. You know, compare that to other uh, uh, options and it, it, it's nuts. So, cause like you might have an artist you follow and they have a Patreon and you get on the Patreon, you can pay a lot of money to get like a few minutes with them. Well, in New Masters, you're constantly getting this feedback. You're constantly like embraced by the community. You're getting so much feedback from so many advanced artists and the students are extremely advanced. That we've got this, we've got the most advanced students at New Masters Academy. So if you come into the community, like on Discord or, or whatever, and you share something, you're getting really good advice from really, skilled people and it's an unusual it's not the normal thing where you buy a thing you buy a course because it popped up and you bought it then then maybe they have a form or something everyone no one's answering your questions nobody cares you already bought the thing you don't matter anymore your masters is it's really much like a school it's like a community it's like a guild it's like a it's like a group and when you're part of this community you're getting showered with advice and encouragement only good advice you're getting protected from bullshit. we're doing all of this for you and um, I, don't, I kind of lost my train of thought there. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, just wanted to share that. <laughs> um, yeah, any other questions, Peter? I think I think there's some that's popping up. Uh, yes, yes, there are quite a few. Uh, sure. We have two students asking uh, basically the same question, uh, but the question is, uh, if there are two courses in like a Choose this course or choose this course. Like can right you do all of them? Yeah, uh, yeah. You you can you can. Oh, talk about them. yeah, yeah. Sorry, the the thing I lost in my train of thought was that because the interactives are so generous, uh, unprecedented, and I'm sure other. I mean, dude, they're going to copy us eventually. They're going to find some way to do it, but it's very hard to do. It's very hard logistically. But because you're getting interactive feedback on the assignments for no extra charge. We have to have some way of controlling it so that it doesn't explode and break the system overnight because of the, I mean, there's a lot of new master students who aren't. So the way that we, one of the ways we do that is we ensure that you can, you can't skip ahead. So you have to kind of go through it structurally, but it's not just in order to make the program sustainable. It's actually, that's how we believe you should learn. And everybody thinks it's the most common thing as a world in the world is a student thinking that they're ready for a class they're not ready for. That's like 90% of the time is what we see. So this is a way that we kind of are forcing some accountability on you, even though it doesn't cost a lot like an $800 class or $200,000 for art school. So it's not financially accountable in that way, but still it's not nothing. It's for a lot of people, it's a significant investment. So there is that, but it's really, if you want to do new masters properly and get the feedback and not treat it like Netflix, you have to go through this interactive track system. So if you're not doing this, you are making a huge mistake. 
you need to get into these tracks and you and if you're like oh well i'm already I, like these classes feel a little basic for me do them and show the assignments and if they truly seem basic tag me but that doesn't happen <laughs> people get in there and they start drawing they're like oh i need this i thought i didn't need this but i was i was wrong so get in there and do it but because that's the way you can unlock years of training for no extra cost besides what you would need to get access to the to the basic library anyway. So I highly, I highly advise you to do this. It may not always be sustainable. It may be more expensive in the future. It could be that this starts to catch on more and more. I mean, not new masters, but specifically this system. And it could be that, okay, we're maxing out, so we have to charge more. Right now, there's no extra charge. Someday people are gonna talk about that like a, like a hack in an MMO where you could stand over a flame and max out your stats and then those people throw off the balance of the whole game. That's what's going on right now. So if you're hearing my voice right now and you're not doing the interactives, making a huge mistake. Get in there right now while you can, while we can keep, we're gonna keep it as affordable as we can, but if it becomes really popular, it's not easy to scale that because you need to bring on new humans to do the teaching. It's not like we can just move something from an AW2 instance to another one and, and set up some load balancing to hit a button and go have lunch. This requires more organization to expand the interactive critiques. So if you're not in there, get in there. Yes. Okay. Uh, Did we answer the expand? question though about the choice points? Yeah, to expand asked. on the previous question about choice points. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the answer is is yes, you can. But also with these choice points, uh, Dean is saying, it seems like a lot of these choice points, both options will be useful and how much overlap exists between them. For example, say dynamic sketching, uh, sorry, dynamic gesture drawing and then uh, drawing with force. That's a really tough question. That's a tough question because in reality, New Masters Academy has way more courses than are on the track document, right? So yes. we've got, there's no way to get more value for your money. There's thousands of hours of content that you're getting and it's all at the highest quality. So to do all of the new Masters Academy courses isn't feasible. Um, I think a few years ago, we calculated how long it would take conservatively and it was over 10 years just for the courses. But now you have live class DVRs and all kinds of other content. So it's not actually possible. I mean, it's not like it's YouTube or something where it's just like an ocean but it is way too much content for any person to do. So you have to make choices, unfortunately. So I could make an argument why you definitely should take every choice point, not one or the other, but both. I can make that argument, but realistically we're limited by our human lifespan and our, like yeah. there, are, unfortunately we have, to, there's a level of maturity that comes with understanding you can't do it all. You can't do your MMO, that's also a comic and also a HBO series, it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? You have to make choices and so, these, these are what we feel like are the best options. And there are some reasons why you might wanna choose one choice point over the other. And we can answer questions like that. Like, I think we were kind of planning maybe a series of videos that explain, take this one if you're more yeah. into this, take that one. But in reality, doing both, yes, that will help you. But also there's a lot of foundations to get through. And so we have to make, we have to make choices in order to get somewhere. You don't wanna be, you don't wanna be in the foundations for the next 10 years you know what i mean some people actually seem like they would be comfortable doing that and i think that has to do with a fear of creation and a fear of moving forward and a fear of change you don't want to be in the drawing foundations module for 10 years try to get through it way faster than that and try to be aggressive and then later you can always go back and take that course it's not like it, there's no door shutting for you it's not like you have to choose the t lady or the tiger you can choose the lady and the tiger That's yeah um uh, going going with like how we built these choice points um maybe well a lot of time the philosophy is the same like when, when we're putting when we're putting the the courses together and choosing the choice points the philosophy the 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 sort of core concepts of what we're aiming for is the same but the direction and and, and maybe the lessons change uh depending on the instructor because each instructor has their own style has their own order of what points are important to them but they all lead to the same sort of philosophy that 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 we're trying to to give within the choice point yeah i think that's a great way of putting it yeah there is sort of like a hypothetical we have an idea of what like the perfect student coming out of foundations looks like and what they can do now what you want to express creatively that's personal what what art you like is personal although it is a factor of skill as well so that's a little tricky, but what you want to do, your own unique creative goal, who you are as a person, as a creative person, that's all what you're bringing. We're not here to, to teach you that. That's why it's not an atelier. That's, not, that's why it's not Jacobo Atelier 
and you got to just do the things I think are most important. That's why it's a collaboration. You know what I mean? Uh, from a business perspective, just making all the content top down is really attractive, you know, because then you don't have to like, there's no competing ideas, but New Masters is collaborative by nature. It's collaborative from its inception. And so Very much. the idea that instructors, because if you talk to Bill Perkins, he's going to emphasize the image above all. And what he calls breakup is what I call the foundational linear uh, language of design. So there's huge disagreements in the framing or different, it's just different perspectives that these different instructors are on. But it's like, imagine if you're you know, a martial arts master and you're learning jujitsu over here and then you're learning other striking techniques over here and then you're doing kickboxing over here and then you're doing wrestling over here and each master of this thing is focusing on the thing that they're good at, you're gonna be, that. that's, I mean, that in competition, that's how it works. That's how it works in competition. You wanna have the best ideas from the best camps. You don't wanna drink Kool-Aid and be like, oh, it's just the Riley method. And this is the greatest method that was handed down from the heavens. And you know, you don't wanna be in a cult. You want to be taking the best ideas that exist and combining them. That's the perfect student. Uh, and that's what we're trying to help you get to. And so, and, and it, it, it's contentious. Different teachers are like, we should have more of this, or why are we doing this? Or that instructor ain't shit. No, I'm just kidding. But they'll be like, we got to do more of it. And so there's this constant like tension. It, there's this constant tension. It's like how life can evolve. It's like, we're, there, there, it's uh, you can hear the the way we talk about it. It's, we're not talking about it like, okay, everybody, go and buy the course and you can learn how to draw too. That's not what New Masters Academy is. This is where the serious theoretical uh, storm of ideas is coming together. This is the cutting edge of the intellectual world in art. It's all happening in the same place. And it's crazy that that exists. There's nothing like, and there has never been anything like New Masters Academy. And so I think it's really important that we're trying to make you into a better student than the, than the professional artist that you are probably like, you're like, oh, I just want to do it like this person. We're, we're probably, we would probably tell you, you can do better than that person. And that person is impressive to you because of your low ability. And once you become stronger, you can take the best things from that person and the best things from that person, the best things from Rembrandt and Michelangelo and the best things from the ancients and the best things from all of these different, and you can bring it together to create something that is really remarkable. That's what we want for you. This is not just we're making art school cheap or we're, it is about creating a better artist and a better future of art. So that's why when, when, you look at new masters, it's so different, even though it's so imitated, it's so different from everything else because they're literally selling stuff. Like they're selling a thing for a beginner who likes this and wants to do that. They're pandering to you. Whereas we are trying to like, like I said, you come to mastery, mastery doesn't come to you. We're trying to show you that path to mastery. And it's, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than any of the teachers. It's, it's this inherited cultural tradition that goes back thousands of years. And it's from Africa and it's from Asia and it's from Europe and it's from all over the world and it's spread. And it's in Olmec art. That, that tradition, that tradition of making lines and scratching a rock against another rock or leaving a mark on a wall and using our arms to create outlines, that is an art that is ancient. And it's not even specific to humans. Neanderthals may have been doing this. And there, there's artworks that go back 45,000 years. So we're not going to take 45,000 years of tradition. And because there's a fad over the last 40, 50 years, we're not going to teach you that fad. We're going to contextualize it in the grander tradition. And only New Masters Academy is doing that. Nobody else is even theoretically thinking like that. And a lot of the people who run these schools are not artists themselves, or they're artists that are out of practice, and they're running it as a business. We're running this as a mission, and you guys are part of that. And every new Masters Academy student, you are the new masters. You're supposed to go over and take take over the art world, and it's already happening. It's actually amazing that it's happening. But you're supposed to go out and take over the art world and make art better. And and look, people are talking about automating art so that there's not going to be any artists anymore. People are saying, why even learn how to draw? This is a crisis, dude. We more than ever, we need to come together and and get our heads out of wherever they are in terms of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and why human creativity and human excellence and self-cultivation is truly the great pleasures of art. It's what we would we would never want to automate the one of the best things about being a human being. And that's what we're all about here. And so we need to be strong and we can't be we can't be messing around with it. You didn't hear me selling NFTs. You know, you heard me and other instructors saying it was a scam. You didn't hear me, you know, packaging up and trying to make money on this kind of stuff, you know, and, and selling to an audience or selling easy answers. You're never going to see me or any of the people at New Masters Academy doing that because this is a mission. We, we're like soldiers in a cultural war and 
the thing that we are protecting is human craft and creativity and potential. So this is, it could not be more important what we're doing. This is not just a school and this is certainly not just a place where you can buy content. This is really part of this bigger mission. And we want you to become the, the, the strongest version of a student that you can become. And we want you to teach us something about art in the way you're putting together these foundations that we never thought of. And our, our students inspire us all the time. It, it's really, it's an amazing feedback loop and the energy is so strong. And I feel like over the last few years, especially, it's really been coming to this point where um, we're, we're really seeing big changes in the art world and it, it's being led here at New Masters Academy. And I want you to be a part of that. Um, let's, let's take a couple more questions, Peter. And, and then, um, I'll handle some uh, some stuff with interactive. Just let me get uh, some FAQs out for that uh, towards the end. Those facts. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so Julie is asking, I completed force and dynamic gesture drawing. How important is it to go back to the choice point between intro to the figure and constructive figure drawing? That's an interesting question because that's sort of meant to help you move on to dynamic gesture drawing mm -hmm. so also this is this is a student uh this is a student of mine in group coaching so i actually know this person's work i think you're one of the examples where you don't have to go back because unless you want to un unless you want to i think that if you are it seems like you're getting bill poo and i haven't seen your force drawings as much but if you feel like you're floating you're okay i don't think you have to go back in your case yeah yeah the current the current rule is if you've completed within interactive force or dynamic gesture drawing you don't go, have to go back to the that uh part three choice point um you're given credit for for that because you you've illustrated that okay i've i've done i understand the knowledge that this prerequisite requires and so you don't necessarily have to go back if you have completed a force or dynamic gesture drawing you've completed both so that's even better um but yeah you you wouldn't have to go back to that part three choice point good question though have we got any others uh just reading here trying to keep an eye on the chat too uh so we have a question from uh Rhiannon. Uh, what if you already know the basics or are intermediate, uh, not advanced yet, but you want to become advanced? Is uh, there any possible way to skip through what you already know? My blood runs cold whenever a student says that every single time. Whenever a student says, I know anatomy, I know the figure, I know the basics, my blood runs cold because 99% of the time they don't. And they're operating under, it's tough. It's tough. That's a tough situation. But um right now we do not have a way for you to like test out of a class you know like because i mean obviously th there are cases where this happens it's just so statistically rare and it's much more common that the student says this and realizes they're incorrect it could be true in your case i don't know who this person is it's almost always not true and what you think the basics are what are not what we're saying the basics are maybe and there's some significant differences yeah so generally speaking our advice is well that's how new masters works it's going to help you you're going to crush those assignments and you're going to show us who's boss right you're going to fly through that stuff your value studies are going to be perfect it's going to be 25 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent. no corrections necessary your 3d forms are going to look more real than reality you're going to absolutely annihilate it it hasn't happened yet um it hasn't, hasn't happened yeah. yet maybe someday I, it will. I, go ahead my 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 under, no my my position on this uh necessarily means like yes you 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 should take it and the way i think about it the way i've structured that response that that answer that yes you feel that you know the basics and maybe you want to skip is i i frame it that uh when i was doing my bfa when i was at the pennsylvania academy they have this one year core core program that each freshman starts has to do i try to test i try to like use my community college credits to like get out of it they're like nah everybody has to do it i feel like in that one year because uh i went back and revisited ideas that that i thought i understood yeah. but didn't fully yeah, understand yeah, yeah, yeah. like i learned so much just from 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 taking that one year um and i've tried to frame this in that sort of manner where you're 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 attacking those sort of those aspects that i that i learned in in that one year the fundamentals um, are eternal so, dude. they're eternal it's mm -hmm. like it's like mastering meditation 
you know, They're like, oh, I've yeah. already, I've already reached enlightenment. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, um, I recorded a lot of the beginning content myself. So I, I created drawing one, which is the free, I mean, I, I mean, mm -hmm. personal I designed this stuff. I did the demonstrations for like swatches. So I've been, you know, I've been drawing seriously as a professional, as a marble sculptor, doing all these things, but I'm drawing squares for the students. After 15 years or so of training, I'm drawing squares. I got so much out of that, just recording it for you. And so if I can learn from the squares assignment at my level, I think you guys certainly can too. And maybe there is a situation in the future, because Thad and I have talked about it. Like if somebody is legitimately like a professional artist, has a high level of skill, but wants to do the tracks, maybe in the future there can be some way, there's some testing or some service or something for that. Um, but here, here's what I'll say. You can tag me personally, whoever this person is. Uh, maybe we, I'll check the name. Start doing the tracks at the beginning. And if you find like it's a waste of your time and it's too easy, and I can see that in your assignments, then we'll talk. But it hasn't come up yet. It really hasn't come up yet. Because most of the time when people are professional, they don't have time to do the whole track anyway often because they're working 13 hours a day or whatever. And so they're squeezing in whatever they can get in. That's really common. But I do recommend revisiting the fundamentals because I've done it my entire career. Uh, I think teachers who teach the foundations have an advantage. So if you look at Alex, uh, if you look at Alex, for example, Alex Neary, him doing these like basic correcting an ellipse again and again and again and again and again and again, he becomes really, really sensitive to these common drawing mistakes. So it will always, like Thad saying, it will always improve your craft. Um, maybe in the future, they're just acknowledging the reality that like maybe in the future we can develop something. But as of right now, if you want to be part of this, you have to go in order. Uh, sometimes a workshop will come up and there will be a live workshop and then we'll give a credit that maybe counts for something on the site. We've done that before. And there might be more opportunities in the future. And there is a program we're working on right now, which is a somewhat accelerated version of the drawing foundations that we haven't announced yet, but it's accelerated, but it's full-time. It's a full-time program. Uh, uh, that hasn't been announced yet and it has to do with accreditation but that there, there may be some accelerated options in the future but my recommendation is just if it's easy do it, i could finish the drawing i could finish drawing foundations probably in, in a couple months at my level now like based on designing the assignments and doing it so if i could get through it faster than the average beginner then i think you could too if what you're saying is correct and you already know the basics if you know the basics you're going to just get a, a fantastic refresher and you're going to learn several things you didn't know it's never happened where somebody went through the basic course and said they knew everything in it it's never happened in the history of nma we've had 180,000 students take the beginner's guide course when it was offered for free just within that one year so nobody has gone through it and said i didn't learn anything never had that feedback ever so i recommend you do it like thad says and if you're crushing it go faster you know, you can take three courses at the same time. You can do drawing foundations and fundamentals of drawing perspective at the same time. You can get your week's assignments done in a day, submit that, already start working ahead on these other ones. You could you could you could really move through this faster, even with the time lapse it takes because of how the parts work. And then you could power through it. Speed there's somebody right now who's like speed running uh drawing foundations. Um there's a student who got a scholarship uh for the Santa Fe workshop. Uh, Tom Bernardis, and he is speed running drawing foundations. And you should look, go on the Discord and look at his assignments and see how he's doing that. So I think an advanced student can get through this a lot faster. You might have to be a little more strategic. And yeah, we'll, it'll take you a few months, even if you're advanced to get through it. But I think it's the it's the best decision you can make for your future and will allow you to get into the more advanced classes. And when Bill Perkins talks about a concept, you're like, what is no tan in chiaroscuro? Or what is major and minor key? Or what, what, what does he mean when he says that? Well, if you had gone through it, you had already had him as your teacher in Drawing Foundations 1, you're missing so much context. You're going to really struggle with the more advanced courses. That's why you shouldn't bounce around on New Masters Academy. It's sort of a waste of time. It's more like entertainment because you don't have the foundation to understand what they're saying. You think you understand what they're saying, but you actually probably don't. So I, I think everybody should go through it at this point. Yeah, I think that's a, a great place to start wrapping up. Uh, on the, based on the philosophy of why everyone is going through this uh, and why it's so valuable and how it uh, it's going to affect everybody's learning going through uh, New Masters Academy. Uh, so uh, Thaddeus, did you have any uh, thoughts that you wanted yeah. to start wrapping up on? Yeah, we, we could do some some housekeeping on interactive rules. Um, so the the main the main uh, 
points that I want to get across with the, the new module in interactive, this is interactive specifically, is that once you unlock a part, so you say you've gone through part one or or you're on you're on part two or you're on part three, you could take any of these courses within that part simultaneously. Um, so before it was, okay, I, I, I got to do three, and then I go on to number four, and then I go on to number five. But now once you have unlocked a part, you can you can work on uh, drawing foundations too at the same time you're working on on food. Um, so that that's that's a rule that's re implemented in here. Um, other than that, uh, if you have a live class certificate for any of the courses that are in part one to part four, um, you can turn that into uh, to get that uh, substitution so you turn that where 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 would, where would they have earned a live certificate uh certificate that they could use in the past a live class certificate yeah uh so uh beginner guys are drawing which is the old uh version of drawing foundation one we've ran live classes on fundamentals of drawing and perspective with renee we've uh Ilya has ran uh fundamentals of observational drawing uh sheldon uh a couple years ago ran uh stress-free sketching um where else? So, so there are students out there. There are students out there that did the live class, which would have been short, and 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 they can just upload their certificate from that live class. And if you didn't find it, just email us. We'll help, mm -hmm. we'll help you get it. But yeah, basically, I, if you, if you took any of these as a live class and you completed it, you don't have to do the track course. It counts for that. You just have to upload your yeah. certificate, and it's like, Bing! and then up, it just lets you through. Up up to part four. But once you, we get into part five and part six, uh, you have to take those courses uh the, the the knowledge cap in there is so much that i think i i feel personally as the director of education that uh, submitting each one of these assignments and getting individual feedback for for yeah. all the courses that are in part five and part six are essential to to get into the courses the, the, the difference between somebody watching a course and maybe doing some of the assignments on their own and doing the interactives in terms of learning results is night and day you're and almost wasting, you're almost wasting your time to just sit there and watch it because if you don't put it into practice and learn how you're doing that right or wrong and then reinforce that with pressure and stakes your brain is not in a position to learn a lot of times we just watch educational videos or we listen to it in the background and we think it's teaching us but that's not active learning every all the science of learning that we know supports the idea that you need to do the interactives and not just watch stuff you're just hearing smart things to say in conversations you can't do what the teachers can do this is this is the only way you're going to be able to actually do it is with this consistent that's how the master apprentice system worked work on this this isn't right you're not seeing this you don't know what you don't know yes. and you can't see what you don't see people talk about blind spots right something you can't see well when you're in a beginner when you're a beginner you don't have a blind spot you have a spot of any of a little bit that you can actually dimly perceive it's all blind spot you're blind you can't see how terrible every mark and stuff is, which is okay, because that is what a teacher helps you to see. And so the only way to improve the work is to get another eye of a more experienced artist, because you think you're getting it, you think you're doing what the teacher's doing, and you're making progress, you will make progress, but when the teacher sees and you're like, no, you're not understanding this, or you're missing that, or your heads are three times too large, someone has to tell you that. You know, art is learned, and, we, and the primary way we learn is through imitation and through, uh, conversation with with a more experienced mm -hmm. teacher if you're not doing the interactives you're not getting the value it's like going to a five-star restaurant and you're just going to eat croutons and saltines at the bar but then you're still going to pay the it's crazy like you want to get the lobster or the steak or whatever you came to the the restaurant to get so don't don't pay for new masters and not do the interactive it's a waste of money yeah um to hop back into into that question i'm, I'm seeing the the youtube comments um for the like part five and part six for those courses that say you do have a certificate for dynamic sketching perspective one or bills composition for visual artists you don't necessarily have to do the assignment all over again you can use your assignments that you turned in and submit those for feedback um you do have to follow some of the rules that are in place for interactive submitting them one week at a time wait till you get your feedback and then submit the next that's really important, uh, important yeah, the, the important part is that you're getting that feedback and then you're 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 using that to to build your knowledge. And yeah. the the thing with some of the live classes is they were so great. They had so many impactful instructors that the instructors weren't able to give every single person individual oh, feedback yeah. every week. And that they, problem they, is we getting probably got worse. to everybody once or twice. That worse. Yeah. Yeah. So with with these core classes, I, I think they're essential that you take 
the homework that you've done in, in those live classes and submit those get feedback. See if there's a way you can implement that into the following week. Um, and, and it's really just helping to build your knowledge base. I, I, I don't want to make you feel like you have to redo the entire assignment and restart it from scratch when I'm saying you don't get the substitution. What I'm saying is you take those those assignments that you've done and turned in already yeah. and submit them for interactive feedback. Yeah. Also, yeah, the 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 actual certificates and then when we pretty soon we're going to have more news, but this idea of certificate to more advanced degrees all of this has to mean something, right? And so when you have a certificate, eventually a degree from New Masters Academy, we want that to be like a gold standard. Like, oh man, they didn't just go to, they just didn't go to the local, to the local uni here to get this. These people can draw. It's more important for the community that the New Masters Academy uh, credits of any kind are the gold standard for the industry than it is that you had to redo. So the mission always takes precedence over unfortunate little things where it's like, cause I, we've had a student who was like, oh, I did this course already and now I need to do it again, but I don't have my assignments. I, I lost them. Well, if we just said, oh, no problem, dude, check it out. I can just put a little check in this box, <laughs> boom, <laughs> solved. Well, your weakness of not having that is gonna undermine the credibility of the entire program. That cannot happen, that cannot happen. So. I think if you are in an awkward situation where you did the course and you have the assignments, yeah, just submit them, dude. Just submit it and get the feedback. Think about it. Submit the next one. Think about it. If you have time, maybe rework one or do one more. It's up to you. That's really easy. But if you don't have the and you already did it, you got to take one for the team. It's going to make you stronger. You're the artist that did it twice. You know, it's going to be easier for you. So I think there are some rare fringe cases where somebody kind of does get caught in a weird place, but they've been pretty rare. I can only think of a few that I've heard about. For the most part. Just like Thad said, just yeah. submit your submit the assignments you already did. You know what I mean? And yeah. but try to don't just submit it and waste everybody's time. Submit them and take notes, put them on your drawing. Exactly. Try to implement them, like Thad said. That's the best way to do it. But any kind of organization, institution, accreditation, anytime that that means that there's always going to be these little awkward little fringe cases. And we try to be as flexible as possible, but we're very like, dude, we're, we're I mean, you you're you're hearing me talk. We're we're nuts when it comes to this stuff. Uh, we, we, we want what's best for you, but we're not here to soothe you and make it easy for you. We want you to become strong. We want you to become little Spartan artists where your spear is like your <laughs> stylus. We want you to be warriors. And so we, we are, we're always going to tend to like want to strengthen you. And it might feel like, oh, I have to do this. It's like, no, we're, we're, we want you and every other student around you to be as strong as possible. But if you're in a weird situation, you can always email in. We're very, we're very, we're also very, uh, we're not some big bureaucracy. It's a very, yeah, a lot of impact, but a very small team relatively, you know, it's like 50 something instructors, but the core team and stuff is, is really small. And so when somebody emails in, you're not getting blown off, you know, generally we're going to, we're going to try to, uh, to work with you, but, um, also because we're not a bureaucracy, we're also not like, uh, we're not overly formalized. Like this kind of organization is where we put our attention because this matters. We don't formalize just to keep people busy doing stuff. So it's not like, oh, well, you've got to, well, in this case, you've got to do this and this and this, and then you go to this person. That, that's not how new masters work. Just email in. We usually will just help you out. Yeah. Uh, emails, emailing in, it usually gets sent to either my desk or Peter's desk um, for, for these type of, types of questions. Yeah. Um, other than that, I think that was ma the main housekeeping points I wanted to address for interactive. Um, as for like the conclusion, I just want to preface like this is a streamlined progression now. Um, it's really focused on skill development and we've expanded the curriculum, have uh, more comprehensive learning paths and it's more personalized. You get, you get uh, so many more choice points and I think this is a great way of introducing you to the further tracks yeah and so far the feedback the the has been really good maybe you should talk about that oh yeah because we've been getting a lot of feedback because there's a lot of artists who are like so tapped into new masters where thad will post an announcement and they're already commenting on it and asking questions within seconds it's kind of crazy how fast everything moves but the the overwhelming feedback we've gotten so far is thank god it's 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 less grindy mm -hmm. in some areas. There's more choice in areas where people were tense, yep. and there's more help for things where people were getting stuck. That that's called an iterative design cycle. This is what other school schools do it, not as more slowly, not as much. Yeah. But websites don't do this. They don't do this, which is because normally you make a course, 
what is it? It's content, right? Think of it just like YouTube, right? That's how most people think about it. It's this video, there's a contract, somebody made the video probably at home to a spec sheet, they submitted it to you, now you're gonna sell this and there's gonna be a bell curve on your sales. So this person's gonna show you these techniques for comics, you know, and then they do their thing, it's an hour and a half long, they have no coordination with the rest of the educational system. This this person has never even taken a course on that website, they have no idea, so it's this repetitive, redundant, contradictory, unstructured information, and then they just sell it. They're not going back into it and looking at the assignments and seeing where people are at and then redesigning the, I mean, Drawbox does, but it's extremely rare to do that. So the fact that we care about something that already got published and we're looking at it and we're talking to the yeah. TAs to see where people are struggling, we're listening to every complaint and we're looking at your drawings and we're thinking, ah, oh, they're not getting it or how oh, you know, this is a little too long. And we're looking at your statistics. How long are people here? Where's the drop off point? Where are people bouncing? Looking at the, all of that we're doing to make it better for you. And it's just like evolution by natural selection. We keep making these little modifications with the selection pressure of the quality of your work. And New Masters is going to be better every single year from now until as long as, you know, we're able to keep existing here. And so mm -hmm. this is actually a service for you. So you need to think of it like this. This is costing the company resources and money and time and effort to make it better for you, not just to sell more. You know, our, our focus is we're not meeting in everyone and we're not pointing to a whiteboard and saying, here's the number of new acquisitions. Where is our uh, PPC numbers at? That's what most companies are doing. We get together and we're like, how are the students' hand drawings doing? That's all we care about. We're completely obsessed with your artwork and the quality of your work. And so that's what these changes are all about. It's about making it better for you, but it's not always making it harder. There's sev several of these changes are actually about making it smoother, which yes. if you're gonna be technical, we are making it easier because you don't have to do drawing foundations, food and photo app. That's what you had to do before. So you had to draw basic forms and line exercises and light and shade in drawing foundations, which used to be beginner's guide. Then you had to do it in FODAP, which was inc including perspective and, and more elaborate rendered out scenes. And then you had to do it in food, which is the beginning part of the Russian course where you were also, so it was like an enormous amount of swatches and lines and, and, and objects. And we thought that was important because you need, that's the most, you know, you have to drill those skills. Yeah. But then seeing how the students evolved once they got past that, we're seeing they are getting this stuff. So maybe we can lighten it up a little bit here, smooth this out, listen to these things. And so it's like, dude, we're, we're cutting the wood, you know, and we're chiseling it out and we're sanding it and we're adjusting it. Like there's an amount of care and love that goes into New Masters content that doesn't exist anywhere in the world besides here. So it's, it's all about you. We're obsessed with your progress. And, and that's what the mission is all about. So give us feedback. But you, when, when a new change happens, cause it's like, oh, they updated, they updated Instagram. Now my thing doesn't work. There's like this natural human reaction to just complain about any change. They, <laughs> The new site, it used to be this button and now it's that button. That stuff doesn't matter. You need to just relax. What matters is, is focus on what matters, which is your, your craft. That's what we're focused on. We're not focused on the little stuff. We're focused on that. So don't think of it as I have to do this, I have to do that. That's almost like the way a child thinks about it. Oh, I have to eat my broccoli. Oh, I have to wake up. I have to go to bed now. Try to elevate your understanding to, to focus on the gratitude of like, this is being designed for me and I'm being listened to and my future is the priority. That's where, this is an act of love. The master's is an act of love and it's part of a multi-tiered strategy to change art in the world. And it's the most important part because it starts with education. So that's how we're thinking about it. Hopefully try to get on board with us. And if you have suggestions that you think will honestly make it better, share it with us, share it with us, email us, let us know. So many of the changes we make are because somebody said it, a student said it. That's really common. We really listen to the feedback. That doesn't mean that every idea you have, we're going to listen to, and you need to be able to take that maturely. Because sometimes people are like, why don't we do it like that? And then we don't do it. And they're like, well, New Masters doesn't listen to feedback. We do, we just, you know what I mean? Like we're in a different vantage point than you are and they're both valuable, but we need to be able to do what's best for everybody. And that you need a certain level of maturity and understanding that you can, you can give your opinion and we can think, mm, I hear what you're saying, but we know better. That's gonna happen too. But at the same time, all that feedback is extremely valuable. So we really want to hear from you. But this has been received really positively because people who are in the thing doing it realize that, oh, it's making it better. And we have sort of a contingency for somebody at every level too. So we've, we've sort of, we've done our homework here. We know this is a very good hot fix and it's going to improve things for people. And we're going to yeah. put it out there and we're going to see how it goes from there.
Yeah, these changes just didn't come lightly. These changes came after a year, year and a half, almost two years of, of feedback and us deciding, all right, what are the most appropriate changes to make everybody's learning path, their journey uh, smooth and and f f uh, fulfilling? Like we, we want to make sure you go from A to Z and you have everything covered and you can move towards the next track. Yeah, you guys are the one, you're Rocky. You're the one that's carrying the tire and you're the one that's hitting the meat and you're the one that's running through the, the snow. You're doing the hard work as the student. We just need to make sure that your training is set up right. So we take your training as, as seriously as you take your own artwork. And it's a collaboration. You know, like sometimes I imagine New Masters Academy is a physical place and every student's a person and, and I can see them there and I see them. And so when I go into the interactives for one course, I imagine a classroom or I imagine a space where everybody's working on this stuff and I'm spying on you guys constantly. I just jump in and look at your assignments and I'm like following certain students and saying, okay, they're struggling with this and then they're, it's developing here. And so there's there's so much like attention that we're personally giving you. And I'm the owner of the, I'm the owner of the company. I'm not I actually don't need to be involved at all at this point because we have such a fantastic team besides like saying high level ideas, but I'm actually on the community and I'm, I'm looking at your assignments. I'm looking at your beginner assignments personally. I don't know if the heads of different schools who are never the owners, you know, for the most part, but I don't know if the, the heads or executive directors of schools are sitting and watching group coaching sessions and listening are as fascinated, frankly, obsessed with the progress of the students the way I am. And that's how the entire team is. You know, if, if New Masters Academy team is off the clock, they're probably watching a New Masters Academy or taking a class or something low key. Like that's how it is. Like we're living and breathing art and we're trying to make this the pl the best place in the world for, for, for art to flourish and it, are, and it is. So it, the attitude and the whole thing is very different than than other places that that try to imitate some of the buzzwords. Like you can say foundations and fundamentals and you can echo and parrot the things we say, or you can watch our courses and then make worse versions of them and sell them online. But that that that's just a reflection of our position as leaders. Um, I don't really see it as a is like is a threat. Like I'm not thinking of this as oh, we're all competing for money of the students. I think of it as, well, naturally they're all gonna imitate us. We're the ones who know what we're talking about and we know what we're doing. But once you find out that about new masters academy and once you learn what we're about you need to actually you need to get involved in this program because there is no other program like that some people like they'll buy a new masters academy so they say let's say this all the time they'll buy a new masters academy subscription for a month they got overwhelmed because there's so many courses they forgot to log in they cancel their subscription and then seven years later they come back and they're like what was i doing i was wasting all of that time where i could have been advancing so quickly don't be one of those people that hear this don't act on it regret it for several years when you're stuck, have a crisis, come back to it and learn it. And then you're one of the people who are saying this. You could just get started with the tracks today. It is extremely affordable. It's art school, but you're not paying $200,000 for it. You're paying $35 for it. Or depending on which country you live in, lower than that. There is no excuse. There is no plan. There is no student who's going to talk to me and convince me that they don't need this. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm not normally in a situation where I'm pitching new masters. This is a special situation, but you need to be in here because this is where this is where it's at. This is where the best teachers and the best ideas and the best theories, the strongest community, the most love and attention. This is where the masters are. It's nowhere else. And we're not like other sites. They are just trying to legitimize themselves by imitating us, but this is where it's at. So if you're listening to this right now, get in the interactive tracks, start drawing foundations one right now. And if you can't afford to start a subscription, then do drawing one, which is a free foundational course that's better than drawing on the right side of the brain. It's better than anything else out there. Start doing that right now. I designed an entire course and instead of putting it out as a book, you know, and maybe making a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars on it. I literally just made the entire thing free, including interactivity. You get free interactivity from a master teacher right now on drawing one on the Discord. That is like that, that's like a public service. And if you're not taking that, then I oh, I don't have enough money for a subscription. Why aren't you doing drawing one? You have control of what happens right now, and you're choosing whether to do the entertaining, easy stuff or whether to really invest in yourself. Have the self-respect to believe that you will be a master artist. Mastery is not for others. It's for every single one of us. But you have to have the, the self-esteem to decide I'm worthy of the right kind of education and taking the time to do it right. You can get started right now, and that's what we, we really want you to do. Perfect. I think on that note, I think we we covered everything.
Um, all right. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Joshua and uh, Thaddeus, for joining us today. And uh, that was very enlightening and very inspiring as well. I hope everybody uh, learned something about your Master's Academy and have a clear direction on uh, clearer direction on where they're going with their education as well. And I hope mm -hmm. that uh, everybody knows now uh, how the Drawing Foundation's modules work, uh, what the changes were. And of course, if you have any questions, then feel free to reach out. Uh, we will help you at, at any time. Yeah, and get, uh, on the dis get on the Discord. If you guys are not on the New Masters Academy Discord, currently, it might not always be the case because every single technology, people are like, oh, Facebook's so much better than myspace and oh my god instagram <laughs> only old people are on facebook and then instagram is ruined no one's using it that's going to keep happening we're here throughout all of that so when youtube is no longer free and it's in vr and you have to plug into the back of your brain and you have to scan your fingerprints and everything and that's the only way to experience youtube we're going to be here it's this obsession and insanity and dedication to the tradition. This is what makes New Masters so strong. These other things, they come and go, dude. We're not going anywhere. We're not selling out. I was offered, people have tried to buy New Masters Academy. Normally when you create a business, your goal is to sell it for $200 million, a billion dollars, and then you retire to an island and no one ever sees you again. That's the goal. That's what every single influencer and business person is trying to do. They are trying to build an asset, sell the asset, and retire. I've been, New Masters Academy, two major companies, one a $9 billion a year company, huge, huge, huge company, tried to buy, buy New Masters. I said no. And another company that is now part of the uh, Meta tried to buy us before they were part of Meta. And I said no again. I'm going to keep saying no. I said no to the biggest entertainment company in the world owns a comic book company. That comic book company two years ago reached out to New Masters and said, let's, the big, it's the big one. It's the big one. They said, let's do a partnership where we'll bring you artists and we'll co-brand your content. And we'll, and I said, no, why would I need that? I can just call, I can call David Finch. I can call Ryan Benjamin. I can talk to these artists who you don't pay very much and you exploit their work. And I can just work with those people directly. We don't need some corporate gatekeeper coming down to New Masters Academy and standing between. We're not interested in that stuff. There is no selling out at New Masters Academy. It, it is only our mission. And that's because I want New Masters Academy to influence the entire art world long after I'm dead. That's what we're trying to do here. So this is a project that is not for sale. You're never gonna hear us compromising on our values ever. And if that's something that you are looking for, then I really hope that you join us. The easiest way could be, besides signing up for the site right now, literally just go to the Discord and join. It's free. You can see what we're all about. I'm on there ranting and talking that, I'm talking that uh, talking that art theory <laughs> often, yes, just like yes, this. Yes. <laughs> and uh, but but you can just come and be part of that. And, and once people come, they end up staying. And if they leave, they come back. That that's just how it is. There there's nothing else like this. So we really want you to be part of this. And if you're a strong artist and you've already got a lot of skill, fantastic. It's so exciting to have inspirational artists that are part of this because then they become the role models for so many other so many of the other beginners. So yeah, hope you join us. I think that's all we did. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get Thanks again, everyone. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate Bye -bye, it. Bye, everybody. Uh, yeah. Reach out if you guys have any questions. Take care.